Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. While most of us know Sky Harbor Airport, Phoenix also manages two thriving general aviation airports, including one in my district that's the busiest in the nation, Deer Valley. We'll learn more about it later in the show. But first, we're going to talk about Sky Harbor. We're going to find out what's about the airport's history, explore exciting modernization plans, and learn about day-to-day -day operations. Joining us today is Assistant Aviation Director Chad Mikowski. Chad, welcome to the show. Thank you, Councilwoman. Happy to be here. As, as you know, I'm a big aviation fan, yes. and uh, Sky Harbor is the jewel in this valley. And uh, tell us a little bit about the history of Sky Harbor. Well, Sky Harbor Airport was uh, developed a long time ago. I think it was in the 20s, early 20s, 1920s. Uh, and it was nicknamed the farm back then because it was in such rural landscape uh, in, the, in the city of Phoenix. Uh, since then, that time, as uh, people found out about, about the great climate that exists in the, in the valley and started to come to the valley, the airport has grown significantly. The city of Phoenix purchased the airport. And uh, since that time, we've grown to a, a, a top 10 airport in the United States, three runways and over 40 million passengers served every single year. How many flights do we have a day? So we have about um, 600 uh, flights in total, about 1,200 takeoffs and landings. So that acts, acts, uh, means about 600 flights, airline commercial service flights that come in and out of Sky Harbor each day. And it's not just commercial, if I recall. No, that's correct. We have uh, a bustling cargo uh, activity as well as uh, general aviation. We have two fixed base operators that provide services to the general aviation and business community who uh, come and frequent Sky Harbor as well in the Valley. Do we still have military operations out there? In fact, we do. In fact, we do. The 161st uh, Air National Guard Wing has an air support wing right at Sky Harbor on the south side of the airport. That's an air refueling wing, and so they provide services to Luke Air Force Base, and they go around the world and provide air refueling support to the military. You know, uh, Sky Harbor is, is always receives so many compliments because it's easy, it's convenient. Uh, I, in fact, I like to tease your counterpart uh, Tammy Fisher that um, sometimes I think you're too accommodating <laughs> because I heard a lot of people uh, or a lot of pilots uh, like to land here in emergency situations because they get a royal reception. Yes, we, we take that very seriously. We want to make sure that not at our, our airport will anybody have a bad encounter and so uh, I'm glad to say we are uh, known to be America's friendliest airport. We take that to heart. We want to make sure that every customer has an, uh, an outstanding experience at our airport facilities. We do have emergencies, and, and you are correct. Uh, if somebody is experiencing an emergency in the valley, they like to come to, to Sky Harbor. We have long runways, wide runways, and we have a top-notch emergency response crew that can come and assist them. How many people go through there? Uh, so we have about 40, uh, this last year in, in 2014, we had about 42.1 million people come through, and that works out to be just over 100,000 people every single day go through Sky Harbor Airport. That's amazing. Absolutely. How many people does it take to work out there, take well, care of them? That is interesting. So 40,000 people, uh, based on our last economic study, impact study, about 40,000 people support uh, Sky Harbor in total. But what most people don't realize is that those aren't all city employees. In fact, we only have about 850 employees in total that provide services to Sky Harbor, Deer Valley, and to Phoenix Goodyear Airport to the west. So it's a small but mighty team that takes care of these facilities, uh, makes sure that they're safe for our customers, and that we have that great friendly service. But we couldn't do it without our partners, uh, in, in the, whether it's our federal uh, agencies or whether it's the many business partners that we have at the airport. Uh, we, we, we thank them because they are right with us, making sure that our customers have a great experience. Uh, I, I know that uh, it takes a lot of people but that's a small amount when you consider. Tell us what your employees do. So that's a great question. Thank you for asking. So we are charged with uh, being essentially the, the landlord of the airport, if you will. So the city of Phoenix uh, owns and operates the airport. It's an asset of the community. But the aviation department staff are entrusted with making sure that the facilities are safe, they're efficient, they're cost effective for our business partners and that they uh, are in a condition that will um, exceed our customers' expectations every time they come through the facility. And we have a great team, whether it's facilities and services, our technology group, our business and finance groups, all of them contribute every single day to make sure we have a great, um, great airport for our, our community and for our customers. The airport's always clean. It's usually very modern. Um, and I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but I will tell you, you also have a, a new landmark out there, that tower. Um, describe the tower for people because to me it's, it's fascinating. 
So the air traffic control facility, uh, our, our FAA tower, is really an iconic landmark now in the city of Phoenix. And uh, it was uh, built uh, several years ago in 2005, 2006 timeframe. Uh, we really have Congressman Ed Pastor to thank because uh, he and, and Congress really understood the value of aviation and the importance of Sky Harbor to our community. And he insisted that our old tower needed to be modernized and that's exactly what happened. We now have a new consolidated um, TRACON facility which provides approach control services and a tower facility which uh, they manage all those planes that are on the ground at the airport making sure that they're safely going to the gates and they're safely arriving and departing to our airport. So. I can't thank them enough for their services. I, I was fortunate enough to have a tour of it, and it's like a space capsule. <laughs> <laughs> All those screens, and uh, I take it there's a lot of satellite information coming in because uh, you could really track the planes almost around the world. Absolutely, yeah, there's radar screens in there for the legacy uh, radar uh, activities, and they're actually modernizing a lot of the facility, even more so now as we go into this next-gen initiative they're going to electronic flight strips instead of the manual paper written flight strips. And they're going to data uh, driven communications as opposed to pilots speaking to air traffic controllers. All of those things will make our airspace more efficient and more safe. I, I had um, the good fortune to be able to tour Honeywell uh, and their aviation uh, where they let me play on one of their modulars uh, for a commercial airline. And yes, I crashed every time <laughs> trying to land. <laughs> I couldn't, seem to miss that mountain, but uh, the technology is just mind-boggling. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they really don't need a pilot. It's like almost you hear but the cars that drive themselves. Planes could up and down by themselves. Yeah, they could, and they have been able to, quite frankly, for a long time uh, now. And, you know, I think most people would prefer to have the pilot in the flight deck, but uh, the planes are very sophisticated and they're very capable to, uh, to actually operate by themselves. And we're starting to see more of that with UAVs and some of those things you're hearing about in the news. Yeah, they, they were talking about um, the next generation of planes and the updated technology, and uh, it, it was so impressive. Uh, people should be able to feel safer because uh, everything is covered. I mean, it's, there's no guesswork anywhere. I mean, it's measured to middle school numbers. Uh, everything is in color. The trains are pictured. So not the old black and white screens with no depth perception. I mean, it's, it's 3D and it's just super fantastic. What I really enjoy about the aviation industry is even though it's among the safest, it is the safest form of transportation in the industry. Uh, we don't let rest on our laurels. Everybody, whether it's an airport operator, an aircraft operator, um, a aircraft uh, manufacturer, everybody's looking for ways to continuously improve and make the uh, facility and the operation more safe. Yeah, it, it, it's quite. I want to go back to the other people that work at the airport. How many, do you have any idea how many restaurants you have? Or gift shops? Oh my, I would, uh, I, I don't have an exact number, but I would venture to guess we, uh, in all three terminals today, we probably have between um, 40 and 50 different restaurant facilities uh, operating in all the, all, the, all the terminals to provide services to our customers. Which takes a lot of people. Oh my goodness, yes, yes. Uh, in fact, I know our two food and beverage operators probably employ in the neighborhood of uh, 1,000 to 1,500 employees to provide services. And those are not city employees. Those nope, are not at all. private companies. That is correct. And, and that is kind of what's unique about an airport is a lot of people think when they interact with somebody that they're talking to perhaps the airport owner. Uh, but we have more, far more employees at the airport that are providing great services um, that are necessary for the public to, to, to be, uh, have an enjoyable trip. Uh, and they're not City of Phoenix employees, but we work with them to make sure that they represent the values uh, of our community just like we do. Yeah, they're great, great people. They're always Wonderful friendly, ambassadors. smiling, and, and provide great service. So I'm, I'm very proud of the job you do. You do a great job. Uh, you know, one of the things, uh, I, we get lots of compliments on, on the food out there. People even drive out there just to eat dinner now, <laughs> uh, which is amazing. Uh, but we get revenue from those restaurants, is that correct? How, how, are you, how do you fund the airport, I guess, is my base question. Yeah, so there's a, a number of ways that we do fund the operations of the airport. So uh, when consumers uh, fly on a flight, there is a, a portion of the, the ticket that they pay for that does go to the airports uh, to ensure that we can continue to invest in our runways, our taxiways, our airport infrastructure to make sure that we have safe, efficient, and modern facilities for, for everybody. 
But in addition to that, we have other ways that we obtain revenue at the airport uh, for services. Uh, one is an example that you just mentioned, and that's through our food and beverage program. A percentage of the food when you buy a meal at the airport, and I'm, I'm happy to say that it is street priced food, so you get the same price uh, at the airport as you do anywhere else uh, in the valley. Uh, but a percentage of that, uh, that, that price comes to the airport uh, so we can continue to provide great services. When you park at the airport, those parking fees don't go anywhere except to the airport so we can continue to reinvest in the facilities and make sure we have great facilities for our customers. Just I, two examples. I, I know you get no general fund money. That's uh, correct. You are totally self-sufficient. You are an enterprise fund. Uh, but I also know the uh, industry enjoys lower rates here is one of the reasons it's less expensive sometimes to fly out of Phoenix than Denver or some of the other major cities. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And, and um, at, at the risk of tooting our own horn here, I hey, think what we have what is, uh, we have is, is a, a great management team at the airport. We have a great staff who's very dedicated to running an efficient airport. Um, we are very cost effective. Uh, we have, in fact, uh, a metric that's used in the industry to determine how cost effective an airport is, is cost per in plane passenger. And that CPE uh, at Sky Harbor is among the lowest in the industry. And so that really attracts the airlines in. Well, I, I'm, we're almost to the end, but I, next gen, what is next gen? I keep hearing that. I know it's problematic for us right this moment, but what is it? So next gen is a program uh, I had mentioned how, uh, and we talked a little bit about how the industry has evolved. Uh, quite frankly, um, the U United States has the busiest air traffic system uh, in, in the world. And it's time that we modernize and go to the next step. Airlines right now and, and all uh, air aviation traffic right now are using land-based legacy navigation aids. We need to modernize that, bring that into the new technology that exists today. So they are in the process, the FAA is in the process of modernizing the, the, the system. Uh, they are going to go to satellite-based technology uh, across the nation. Uh, they're going to make sure that the goals of next gen are to provide safer, more efficient, and more environmentally friendly uh, airspace to make sure that we can um, serve the needs of the customer into the foreseeable future. And so that's really the overriding goals of NextGen. Um, the implementation at Phoenix, unfortunately, was a, a little, little uh, bit difficult. A little more than a little, little bit A little difficult. bit more than a little bit difficult. I'm being uh, yeah, optimistic when I say that, but it, it's been a challenge for us. That's where we think the FAA could have improved. But that aside, really the goals of NextGen and what it's trying to accomplish throughout the, uh, the United States, is, it's admirable and it's something that we want to support. Uh, and, and I understand. Uh, it mirrors the technology that I observed at Honeywell that, yeah. that's going on on future planes. It will make it safer for us, uh, uh, more efficient, uh, hopefully keep ticket prices down and, and keep the economy rolling. Um, I agree. Implementation. Sucks, they, quite frankly. They, they need to do a better job, and, and we're going to take them to task for that. Yeah, and I know you're, you're doing a good job on that, and I just want to tell you that I know you and Congressman Pasteur, uh, our team uh, in Washington, working very uh, diligently to uh, get them to come in here, change their ways, and start this over. Yeah. And I, I want to again thank you for your leadership, uh, Councilwoman, and, and the entire council. Uh, your uh, idea to bring uh, Congressman P uh, Pastor into the mix was an excellent idea, and he's going to serve us well in this process, I'm, I'm certain. Oh, I have no doubt of that. He's a great guy. He's Washington long enough to know what he hears uh, and distinguish what's fabricated and what's real, and he has the still has a lot of friends there, so he can make things happen. So, but thank you for your dedication, and I appreciate you coming on the show today. So well, It's my pleasure. Thank you. Up next, major improvements are coming to Deer Valley Airport. Keep watching on the issues. What would you do if you saw a dog, a cat, or a horse that looked like this? Animal cruelty and neglect is a crime that needs to be reported. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams, here with my rescued pets, Henry and Cheyenne. And I'm Councilman Michael Novikowski, asking for your help. If you ever suspect animal cruelty, call Crime Stop, the Arizona Humane Society, or the Sheriff's Office. Animal cruelty is a crime. And together, we could stop it. While most people know Sky Harbor, District 1 is home to a general aviation facility that's a heavyweight in its own right, Deer Valley Airport. It was hopping during Super Bowl week and it's about to get a welcome upgrade. Here to tell us more is the Deer Valley Airport Manager, Ed Farron. 
Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming, Ed. Thank you for having me. Tell us about a little bit about Deer Valley Airport. Well, Deer Valley Airport was actually founded in 1959, uh, and one of the early investors in the airport was a TV personality of the day by the name of Art Linkletter. Oh, really? I didn't that's know right. that. Yeah, that's right. The city of Phoenix acquired the property in 1971 and has since added a second runway, um, and we are about to see some uh, added improvements here shortly. And uh, we talk about it being busy. How busy is it? It is the busiest general aviation or non-commercial airport in the entire country with approximately a thousand takeoffs and landings every single day. It's amazing. It is. And how many does that add up to in a year? About 365,000. <laughs> keeps you busy? It keeps us busy and uh, we're almost as busy as Sky Harbor on certain days. That is amazing. And you have a tower. We do have an FAA control tower, yes. And it's a very safe airport. It is. Uh, it, I, I'm very, very proud to have it in my district. Um, I know that um, you have great facilities there. You also have flight school, I believe? We do have two very busy flight schools. We've got West Wind uh, and Transpac. Uh, and between the two of them, that's what makes us the busiest general aviation airport in the country. So, do you have any idea uh, what airlines are attached to them? Um, they are primarily with the Asian airlines, so um, they've got a heavy, pro uh, heavy prominence in China, Korea, uh, Vietnam. Uh, so a lot of their pilots are trained here and go back to their home countries and fly for the airlines. I, I had the fortune to um, go lobby Air China a couple years ago and trying to get them to fly direct here. And when they walked in the room, they said, well, you train our pilots. <laughs> so I know, <laughs> proud of that. Right. So, um, what's going on at airport? I hear you're doing some improvements. Tell us what's happening. Yes, uh, we've got some improvements underway, uh, literally as we speak. We've got two new taxiway connectors that are going to join the north runway to our northernmost taxiway. Uh, and what that'll help us do is decrease our runway occupancy time, that is, uh, when an aircraft lands, it will be able to get off the runway a little bit quicker and allow the aircraft behind it to land a little bit quicker. Uh, so that'll be a much needed improvement. Uh, that's underway right now. We should be done mid-April with that. Uh, we've also got a couple other um, projects in the pike, and that is um, a uh, rehabilitation of our north ramp area, uh, including the open areas as well as the areas surrounding the north hangars. Uh, one of the problems that we have at Deer Valley is very expansive soil. So the soil is kind of shifting around a lot and it causes cracks in the asphalt. Um, and so um, it is in desperate need of replacement. And so we're going to do that hopefully at the end of this calendar year. We'll take a phased approach, but uh, we hope to start uh, before the end of the year. How many hangars are there? Uh, about 800. And those are private planes? Correct. Oh, and I mean, uh, they vary in size. They do. Uh, everything from the small single engine planes all the way up to the larger business jets. Uh, so we run a pretty wide range of aircraft. I, I was um, very pleased to learn that we do have corporate jets that are housed there. We sure do. And uh, have for a long, long time. That's right. And that number is growing. We, uh, you're absolutely right. We have had those for quite a while. Um, and our two fixed base operators are uh, sort of elevating their uh, involvement in that uh, in that line of business and certainly increase in the number of corporate uh, aircraft that are flying in and out of the airport. Uh, I, on previous segment I talked a little about I had the fortune to tour Honeywell and uh, their aerospace section and uh, do the simulators but they were talking about um, they have I believe something stationed there that they test a lot of their new products People aren't in danger. It's, right. it's uh, uh, quite advanced uh, by the time it goes on that plane, but I was very surprised. I believe that's housed there. It sure is. They've got a very large uh, aircraft called an Embraer 170, uh, which looks like a small airliner. In fact, that's what it is. Uh, and they do a lot of electronics testing in that aircraft. You're right. Because yeah. I, I was very surprised because uh, they showed me three areas uh, with different simulators. Um, based on the size of aircraft and their purpose, you know, that from the little to the private to the commercial. And uh, it was fascinating. But, and then when I got to tour their hangar and they said, okay, this is what you saw over there and this is how we're testing. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, right? it's pretty interesting. So, um, how affordable are you? 
um, our hangar rates are extremely affordable. Uh, in fact, I think we set the, the market rates uh, in terms of uh, the prices for our hangers. Uh, we've got um, two different sizes of hangers. We've got small and large. A small T hanger would cost approximately $200 per month. A large T hanger would be $300 a month. And we've also got uh, open tie down space, uh, which runs just under $30 per month. And then covered tie down space, which is just under $100 per month. So it's extremely affordable. You also, I believe, house the Phoenix uh, Police? We sure do. We've got the City of Phoenix Police Air Support Unit up there, so they house all of their aircraft, uh, both rotary wing and fixed wing aircraft, uh, and they tackle all their maintenance right there in that facility at Deer Valley Airport. That's a great story, too. I, I, I love that. Um, you have a great restaurant. We do. And we've had the same proprietor running that restaurant for over 25 years. She has been a huge success. Uh, and it's very popular with the surrounding community. It's wonderful. She's got a fantastic uh, menu, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and she's got some uh, very good crowds. Yes, and, she does. Yep. And the food is excellent. Yep. And it's home cooked. It sure is. Yep. All home cooked. And she's got a fantastic, very loyal customer base. Yes, she does. And, and uh, I know when she remodeled, um, one of the fascinations are all the planes on the ceiling. Yes. Uh, all model planes. It's, it's, it's a great place to take kids. It sure is, and they've just gotten some brand new model airplanes, so oh, really? I would suggest the members of the community come on down and take a look. Now, do you have a place where people can observe? We do. We've got an observation deck um, on the back side of the terminal building. Uh, two levels. You can look at uh, the aircraft from ground level or an elevated observation deck. Um, both are available to the public at no charge. Kids welcome? Yes, they are. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, we like to encourage young people to get involved in it as a growing aviation. I, I was very surprised that uh, ASU has aviation school. They do. I, yes. It's very impressive. It's by uh, Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. Right. So I'm, I get, uh, I, I'm privileged to serve on that board as Phoenix is represented. And the school comes every month to our meetings and gives us an update. And I was just so impressed. I bet. That what yep. they do. And, and yep. They've got a wonderful program there. They do. Yeah. So, But anyway, back to Deer Valley. Last year's Super Bowl, I know you were wingtip to wingtip. How do you get all those planes in and out of there? It was a challenge. Uh, <laughs> Um, so the, the first step was to develop a uh, reservation system. The FAA strongly encouraged us to develop a reservation system to help us meter the aircraft both in and out. Uh, that way we would avoid some of the um, uh, significant delays that were experienced um, at uh, airports throughout the valley in 2008 when we hosted the Super Bowl. Um, that reservation system uh, was very effective in helping us manage the aircraft um, leaving the airport and transitioning into the national airspace system uh, to avoid a lot of those delays. Uh, and it was uh, received uh, very well by the FAA and was oh, a tremendous uh, success. We didn't have uh, any significant delays this time around. And, but we're a little disappointed we didn't have as many? I think the weather hurt us a little bit. You know, we had um, unfortunately some very, um, for us, severe weather here in Phoenix uh, with some uh, very low ceilings and low visibility. Uh, so that prevented some of the aircraft from coming in. So we didn't have as many aircraft uh, visit us as we thought we would, but it was still a very busy place. Oh, I can imagine. And I remember b before uh, limos were lined up on Deer Valley Road coming in and around uh, to pick up and deliver it was pretty. All right, drop two names that you heard had their private jets there. Uh, two famous names that visited Deer Valley Airport would be Pitbull and Enrique Iglesias. It's always fun to hear which stars <laughs> land and, and yeah. if, if they had a glimpse of it. So, Well, I am so honored that you took time out of your schedule to come and tell me about Deer Valley Airport. And I know we uh, probably have some photos that we're going to insert into the show talking yes. about the Super Bowl. But thank you very much, and thank for what you do, because Deer Valley Airport is superb. Well, thank you for having me, and thank you for your support of Phoenix Deer Valley Airport. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office at 602-262-7444 
or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district one. We'll see you next time on The Issues.